Uh, hi, I'm Brett Collier. I'm a professor of wildlife biology at uh, Louisiana State University. I'm Jason Lapartis, work for Turkish for Tomorrow. I'm our wildlife biologist, and today we're going to talk about diseases. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about turkey disease today, and I'm going to caveat this with the fact that I'm a turkey biologist and I'm not a disease ecologist. So there's a lot of people in the world that know a lot more about the intricacies of these individual diseases than I do. But I know a lot about bird and the impacts that potentially having these diseases could have on the bird. So that's what I'm going to focus on a little bit today. I, I think that's great. And, and, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, too. I mean, I'm not the disease expert, but we know enough to be very dangerous. Very dangerous. Here. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. So just bear with us. <laughs> Uh, we're going to slick this down, and we'll have some fun with it. And I'm, I'm going to throw out a hard one at you right, right off okay. the bat. Are you ready? Yeah. It starts with an L, okay? Oh. Let me see if I can pronounce this. Right. I, I got way too much Southern in me, okay? But lymphoproliferate. Yes. LPD. Oh, disease virus. Yes. LPDV. Okay, LPDV. I got it. I got Lymphoproliferate it. disease hey, hey, virus. Hey, I said it. Yeah. It's amazing. So, so um, LPDV is, is one of those um, diseases that uh, came on the radar a while back and started to get attention in, in the turkey world. Um, and, and to be honest, we're not entirely sure what it does, right? Could um, be causative for other things. Other we're things, not sure. we're not sure. Um, and, and the reason we're not sure is this. Um, we don't generally see four turkeys massive die-offs of birds on the landscape that we can attribute to a disease. Usually what happens is um, we'll get a call from, and not myself, but the State Wildlife Agency, right. uh, our, our you know, collaborators, we'll get a call from some landowner or, or someone in a town or and this says, hey, we saw this bird, this wild turkey that wasn't acting right. And it was, it was standing on the sidewalk. It was walking circles out in the pasture or something. Could you guys come and maybe have a look at it or, or you know, whatever. And then one of the agency biologists will go out and recover it. Mm -hmm. um, usually they'll either capture it. And if you can capture a bird by hand, you know there's a problem, okay? It's not good. It's not good. And they'll capture it by hand and, and either, or it'll be dead um, already, or they'll capture it by hand and they'll euthanize it. You know, you, you mainly put it to sleep. And then um, we'll, we'll pack it up and send it to the Southeastern Cooperative Wildlife Disease Study Group at the University of Georgia. And, and they will take samples from it and they'll take it apart. And, and they'll- Necropsy. Yep, they'll do a necropsy and they'll try and figure out kind of what might have led to its mortality, okay? Um, but, but the problem with that is, is that um, turkeys carry, are able to carry a lot of things that probably don't really impact them. They, they can have LPDV, they can have West Nile virus, um, they can have uh, blood parasites, and they're, you know, they can get avian, flukes. they can get flukes, they can get um, avian pox, yes. you know, they can get blackhead, um, and they can have all these things, and not all of them, not all of them kill them, okay? And we, we need to state that. So, so when we find a bird that, that is acting weird, and we send it in, we get a report back that says, okay, here's all the things that it has. Right. Um, these likely contributed to its mortality, but we don't know what actually killed it. So, so, so what we've done, the, the science side of this is, every bird we've caught, we've started to take blood samples from, from all of our research studies all across the United States that, that most of us are engaged in now. And, and we send those blood samples off and they get screened for a, a variety of things. And I won't bore you all with a long list, but pretty much the stuff we talked about earlier. And then we take that data and we tie it back to what we really care about, right. which is our females that have LPDV or have, you know, um, West Nile virus, because we got a lot of West Nile virus actually uh, showing up in birds, or have a blood parasite or, or whatever, are they acting the same as ones that don't? Mm -hmm. So are they nesting at the same rate? Are they having nest success at the same rate? Are they surviving at the same right. rate? Are they moving at the same rate? Are, are they, uh, you know, having as many temps uh, every year as ones that don't. And then for males, it's a much different question. 
For males, it's um, are they moving at the same rate? And do we see any difference in harvest susceptibility? So are- or maybe even fertility. Yeah, or maybe. And fertility is a tough one. It's a, it's we're getting at, yeah. Yes. So we're not sure, but we're getting at that because there's information out there looking at testes, size, and who's breeding who. Um, that that down the road, fertility absolutely. might play a role. And and the, With disease even. Huh? With the disease. With the disease, yeah, absolutely. absolutely, yeah. Um, but right now, we're fairly, I am, am fairly confident that there are no diseases in the, in the turkey landscape that cause acute mortality. And that means that they, they get the disease and it immediately kills them. And, and, and I'm confident of that for two reasons. Number one, we rarely have evidence. As a matter of fact, I don't think there's any evidence of mass turkey mortalities in the United States. I haven't heard of it either. I, you know, in, in 20 years of doing this, I've never heard of just finding a bunch of birds and they're all dead and they're all diseased, right? Um, and, and, and disease, you know, like you think about CWD in deer, for instance, is, is a good corollary. A deer that gets CWD, you know, has this rapid deterioration and then it dies, right? Um, you know, and we occasionally see a bird that has a rapid deterioration and dies, but we don't see it ubiquitous on the landscape. Spread is different. But the other side of that coin is we catch a lot of birds every year. Absolutely. A lot of birds across a lot of research sites, a lot of faculty and scientists working together. And a lot of our birds carry a lot of different things in them. They, they, they have these diseases. Birds are tough. Birds are tough. And it doesn't seem to impact what they do very much. Now, West Nile virus is an important one Absolutely. recently, right? West Nile virus wreaks, wreaks havoc on grouse, mm -hmm. on rough grouse especially. Bad it's news. Big concern in the northeastern United States is West Nile virus. I, I think that the most recent samples we got from Louisiana was almost half of our turkeys had West Nile virus, uh, you know, evidence of antibodies for West Nile virus, and they still operate just the same. Mm -hmm. It's like it, it's, I, I would, I don't even know if I'd equate it to a cold, to be honest with you. I just think it just exists in them. Right. Um, you know, blood parasites. A lot of our birds have blood parasites. Most of our birds have mm -hmm. blood parasites. We don't really see any negative demographic impacts. Now that said, there's potential that the uh, the cumulative impact of um, multiple different types of diseases Jesus. or parasites could have some negative impacts on, on our birds. And, and we're efforting some of that work now, but it's only recently that like collecting blood samples and getting disease information all pulled together has has you know come to light. Now, I will say this because I talked about West Nile, the. Early challenge experiments with West Nile in the 90s showed no impact of West Nile on wild turkeys. The more recent stuff that I think was out of Pennsylvania mm -hmm. also showed no impact on wild turkeys. So, so I think that, that West Nile as a disease is probably not of major concern for wild turkeys. Um, we're currently efforting LPDV. Yes. Right now, um, I, my hunch is, and this is speculative, my hunch is that LPDV probably is in the same boat, doesn't show a negative effect, um, but it couldn't have a positive effect, right? It's either going to be neutral right. or negative. So, so there's still effort going on across a bunch of study sites on that to evaluate these. Yeah, we're, we're basically talking a lot about the health of the birds, yes. right, overall. And so cumulative effects, yes, and then you add in you know, environmental effects on top of that, it could weaken up a bird or two out there and you can see an issue. Sure. But overall, once again, I yep. think this is important that people know this. Overall, we're just not seeing some magic bullet disease yes. that's taken out our population, uh, localized right. at all. And, you know, there could be some spread of, of certain types sure. of these diseases, especially if these birds are congregating together, such uh, like blackhead, et cetera. Right, blackhead, yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a really good one, and, and they look really ugly when that happens. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but when they get together and these birds are really close-knit, then, yeah, you could get some spread within a flock of birds. Right. But overall, we're just not seeing yeah, the well, issues. You know, and, and whenever we think about the, the, the ongoing decline of eastern wild turkeys in the United States that, that oh, many of us are concerned about and working on, you know, daily, right? Um I tend to think of it as like partitioning out 
how much impact every part could have. And, you know, like the biggest part is, you know, usable space on the landscape, mm -hmm. right? And then there's there's the part that comes with, you know, removals from hunting and there's the part that comes from predation and, and the disease parts are really, in my opinion, the disease parts are really, really small part of that. Now, if you were to ask a disease ecologist, they might have an entirely different and completely valid set of reasons for okay. why they think it is more important. You know, I'm an, I'm an animal ecologist. So, so my view is if they're all doing the same thing, the same way and seem right. to be having the same outcome, it's probably not a concern, but we are all working together, the animal ecologists and the disease ecologists, to try and pin down if there are cumulative effects or not. We're just not there yet. This might be a good one for a, hey, check back in a couple of years. Absolutely. Whenever all of this stuff, there's currently a master's student right now that's doing a set of analyses on West Nile and LPDV looking at uh, demographic response. Is sure. there any adjustments in that? So maybe six months from now, we'll have some really good data on that. No, that's great. But I think this is more of a, a segment to ensure that our turkey hunters out there yep. and, and you guys that are turkey enthusiasts and you're seeing birds, if you happen to see a bird out there or multiple birds that they're not acting normal, and right. I'm not talking about a bird strutting in your front yard and you think something's wrong. Right. <laughs> I'm talking about a bird that's very lethargic. It may be doing circles. It's it may look very will, weakened. Often their necks um, will be bent absolutely. over a little bit. Depending on the disease, yep. if it's got blackhead, it looks like these almost like big black looking nasty warts on its yeah, head. Avian pox, uh, avian pox. The, 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 yeah. looks scabby on Scabby, its yellow, yellowish yes. colorations. Anything that doesn't look normal, that's something that needs to be reported locally yep. to your state wildlife agency. Yes. So please do that because we need all of you turkey hunters out there to be our citizen scientists yes. that's helping us figure out what's going on. We don't think it's an issue anywhere, nope. but if you see something, please report it because we're depending on you to make a difference. Yes. And if you happen to harvest a bird, get fortunate enough to harvest a bird that, that looks a little odd, don't hesitate to contact your agency biologist. They'll be able to put you in contact to either bring it in so it can That's be sampled right. or sent off. Most of these diseases, I don't want to say all, most of these diseases are fairly benign. They, they shouldn't impact eating the, the meat or anything like that, but That's you, right. you might want to have them checked out if you've got any concerns on it. Yeah, absolutely. And the best thing to do in, in order for folks to understand if there is a disease issue, mm -hmm. get that bird and put it in a cool place, yep. okay? Get it home, put it in your, your fridge, whatever you can yep. do to keep it cool until we can get it somewhere else. Take pictures Take of it. Take pictures yep. of it. Uh, all these things will help the professional there to identify yes. the issue. And so uh, just these are some things to think about ahead of time before you get out in the field this spring.